really fun um, recipe today that I think that you all will enjoy. It is a onion pie. No, it's not a dessert. This could be um, served with a yummy salad and great with a steak. And in a couple weeks, I'm gonna be in Manhattan Beach and I'm gonna give you a great steak recipe that I think you guys will love. So um, let's get started. Um, let me talk to you about presentation and serving. I'm going to be making this pie for you today in a 10 inch pie pan. However, you can use a smaller cheesecake pan. You can use a Pyrex pie pan. So you have lots of different options. Once again, you can use a little cast iron dish. You're going to put your crust on the bottom and then you're filling just like you're going to do um, with this recipe that I'm going to teach you. You also can do, and I'm just giving you, remember my cooking classes are all about giving you ideas and you be the judge. You also can use a cupcake, cupcake pan. This is a silicone pan and make your crust and then put your filling in. And of course you can always use your tin. So it gives you some options on what's going on, whether you're having a luncheon or you're doing a dinner, or even if you wanted to do this as a small appetizer on trays, you could do a small cupcake pan. So with that being said, let's get started. Let me grab my pie pan dish, and I've already sprayed this. You can use any spray, cooking spray that you like, olive oil, plain, whatever you choose. And just like I taught you guys prior, on the cheesecakes, this is very similar. This is the Ritz crackers. I'm back at that one <laughs> and a half row because we're still at the 10 inch. So we're gonna use the Cuisinart. Get this locked in. Be careful, this is one and a half rows of Ritz crackers. There is nothing added to this mixture. So we're gonna pulse it. And this is gonna be the crust. I've already sprayed the pie pan. So you can see how easy that was. We're gonna add this. This is real similar for you, for those of you who have watched my um, cheesecake um, classes, you can see that you're gonna do this very similar. You're going to pat this crust. You can take it up as high as you want. This is just your Ritz crackers. I don't add any butter. People are asking me, you know, do you put butter? No, because there's a lot of butter already in the Ritz crackers. But one thing I am going to do different that I don't do in my cheesecakes is I am going to add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Mm. to this crust. This just gives a little bit, I'm just gonna sprinkle it on the bottom. You could put as much or as little as you want. And then I'm going to add some black pepper. You're just gonna sprinkle that all on. So that's the crust. You guys all got that? It's easy. Yeah, it's very easy. So if you have any questions, remember you can always text me on Instagram at Costellos underscore, and we will answer your question. I'm real big on that, and I'm real big on any, every time we post a picture, we're gonna give you the recipe. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoy it. So, since this is a cooking show, and obviously we don't have all day, I've started um, my onions. So, I have a half a stick of butter in here, and there are four onions Vidalia onions. And I'm gonna add one more to it so you guys can see. And I also, you all know I'm really big on really good bacon. So there's one slice of your favorite type of bacon. You can go to butchers and just get to be really good friends with your butcher and just have him give you one slice of bacon. And you can do a peppered bacon, um, an apple smoked bacon, whatever is your flavor, your favorite. Do you cook the bacon with the onions? I do. So you put the raw bacon in? I do. Okay. I start off with the raw bacon 
and um, the onion, so it's perfect. While that's cooking, and before I add another one, I wanna to talk to you about these Vidalia onions. When you're picking out your Vidalia onions, you wanna to try to find the flatter ones, not those great big round ones. There's more flavor in the flatter onions. Uh -huh. So in your search on making this pie, pick out five really flat Vidalia onions, and you'll see a big difference. And if you wanna test me on that, you can saute some onions and take a fat one and then take a flat one. And I'd be excited to hear what your, what your thoughts are. So that's just a little side tip. So I'm also really big in my kitchen on mandalas. You have to be careful with these mandalas because when you're chopping and you get down to the very end, you gotta watch your little fingers. I usually just I'm not a big gambler with this, so I usually just slice it when I get close. So I've got my mandala on high. Um, once again, you can find these mandalas. You can see that this is adjustable, so it can go high. I have it on the high. I've got my flat Vidalia onion, and I'm just slicing all the way through. It makes life so easy. I use this on a cucumber salad. I use this when I make fried zucchini. I don't like to use my tomatoes or my mushrooms with this. So um, it's just not sharp enough. I use, like to use my um, really good knives. So you can see I'm continually moving that onion around to protect my fingers. Some mandalas come with a protector. Um, to me, that protector is more hassle than it's worth. And then I just break off the end. So then I'm going to mix all that in. And um, I can tell pretty much that I need to add a little bit more butter. So I'll add another tablespoon of butter. And I want this to simmer. I want to, I'm going to add um, some salt. And you all know that's been following me on Instagram. A couple shakes is um, pink Himalaya salt. And a really good friend of mine, Dr. Dave from Wine Dot Chiropractor, turned me on to this premier pink salt. And he goes, Carol, I know that in your cooking shows you use Himalaya. I love the salt. So I wanna thank you, Dave. I love everybody helping me um, be the best and sharing everything with you. So that's a couple shakes. Then I'm gonna add some black pepper. Yum, I can smell the onions. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> a couple shakes. Remember, if you're not a big black pepper girl, you're not gonna add that much to it. Or guy. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sarah. Or guy. Because there's a lot of you men out there cooking, too, so that's great. So once your onions are starting to get clear and they're sautéed, you can see that, you're going to add one. This is a, um, you're going to add one cup, this is a half a cup of, parma, of, of um, heavy cream. You're gonna stir that in. And I'm telling you, this is one of my favorite dishes and hardly anybody ever makes it. So it's just a great side dish and something different. How long do you usually cook the onions for before adding the heavy cream? I go by looks on this. You know, not everybody's got a gas stove. Gas stoves cook faster. Some people have got electric. Some people are in a small little apartment in New York. So you've got to go by when they're soft and you can see that they're sauteed. Okay. So I hate to tell people it's exactly three minutes because then people are texting me and saying my onions are still not, not cooked yet. Then I'm going to add two cups of Parmesan cheese and save that because I'm probably gonna add another cup here 
in a bit. This, it was a grated Parmesan, the two cups that I put. But now I'm gonna add another cup of the Parmesan. And remember I told you guys all to get a really good bag of really good Parmesan cheese. And if you can't find a really good bag of Parmesan cheese, grate it yourself. So we're gonna go with another cup of Parmesan cheese. And that's why you wanna use your salt sparingly because there's a lot of seasoning in your um, Parmesan cheese. So I think you just stir that around. So you mix like the shredded Parmesan with the grated? Yes, I do. It just gives it a different flavor. I'm gonna add some sprinkles of parsley and that's pretty much for looks. I'm gonna add a little bit more black pepper. I love black pepper. So we have that all ready to go. And I'm just gonna make room here for my pan and show you guys how this is done. So my crust is all here. Remember I added a little bit of um, black pepper. I added some Parmesan cheese to the bottom of this crust. Now I'm gonna start adding. And you can see it is so yummy. The cheese has started to melt. It's, you can see the consistency is thick. I wanna remind you guys, remember we put that whole bacon in there? That bacon does not go in the pie. So we're just gonna set that aside. You're done with that bacon. So now we're just going to get all this mixture in here. Put this aside. And you're just gonna spread this around. Guess what Sarah's having for lunch today? <laughs> Sarah's having for lunch today because whenever I cook in my cooking classes, we eat afterwards. I can never be on a diet on this. Oh, really Sarah's so tiny. <laughs> so you can see all the cheese. It's like pizza. It's so yummy. So you're just gonna keep filling that up. Looks so good. Keep adding that. And you know, if you're having a large group, you can make several of these. You can make it on a buffet for a brunch. It would go great with, you know, an omelet bar or scrambled eggs. You wouldn't want to do a quiche and an onion pie, but um, it would just be something different if you were doing an omelet bar, um, scrambled eggs, sausage. Yeah, I feel like you could do this for like breakfast, lunch, or dinner, for oh, a side. It is so, you could even do it, you know, with, I mean, omelets. It just is so different and so delicious. I'm going to sprinkle some parsley. And where did my Parmesan cheese go? Oh, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna take, thanks Sarah. I'm gonna take my Parmesan cheese and I'm gonna sprinkle more Parmesan cheese on top. And I'm gonna put this in the oven at 350 for 30 minutes. So you want it um, pretty cooked and then you serve this at room temperature. There are vi several variations that you can do to this pie. You can add a gorgonzola um, cheese to this. Remember I did a cheesecake with the gorgonzola, so you can add that. You can add a little bit of chopped spinach if you'd like. You can add gouda, and you can even add some borson cheese. Not all together, but because the onion has so much flavor but borson cheese would add a great flavor to it too. So there's several different variations that you can do. Could you add Ritz crackers on top too? You or could, but I think that once you put the Parmesan cheese in it, I mm -hmm. think that it would dry it out. Okay. 
So remember, this is a cooking show. <laughs> so remember, I always do one ahead of time for your review. So I did this one in the cheesecake pan. And then I just took this out of the oven. I cooked this for 30 minutes and I'll let this cool. I'll remove it from this pan and I'll, I'll put it on a, a fun tray and I'll just let everybody um, slice it as they want. It smells so good. So what you're seeing on top of here is the parsley and I did add a couple sprigs of fresh basil, mm -hmm. which you all could do if you have a garden and I have an herb garden in my kitchen and I have fresh basil in my outdoor garden. So I hope I've given you um, some, a new recipe that you will enjoy. Remember, if you have any questions, Sarah and I are both here to assist you because I want you to enjoy cooking and, and entertaining with your friends as much as I do. I do have one more question. Great. So when you do your cheesecakes, you you know how you flip over the bottom of the pan? Do you right. do that with this one too? When you're making it in a cheesecake pan, you will. Okay. But remember the one that I just did, I did in a pie pan. So mm -hmm. that one, you would just serve it in that. So I've given them several different options. When you're doing it in a cheesecake pan, it's not really a pretty pan. So you're gonna let it cool off and take it up. But I did that one in a red fun pan and you could serve that right from the oven to your buffet table. Or if you don't wanna do that, you can go ahead and plate your plate and then they wouldn't even see your plate. So um, if you're entertaining and you got a question, we're here, we're here to help. So enjoy, I enjoyed making this for you all today. Have a great day.